everybody, Driven Dave here. We've got another exciting video, or at least it's another video. I hope it's exciting. I'm I'm excited, and I hope you are too. The topic for today: I'm reviewing Kelly Blue Book's ten best new cars for under twenty-five thousand dollars. And uh, I guess most of these are the 2021 models, so not like the 22s that are coming out now, but the 21s. The reason why I got to thinking about this, um, I had something, I don't want to say upsetting happen, but it was a little upsetting. Um, you know how when you buy a new computer, new phone, new tablet, whatever it is, it's fast, it's wonderful, you, it's so much better than whatever you had before. You can't imagine living without it. I mean, if you're anything like me. Now, I don't always have to have the latest and greatest, but, you know, I'll usually wait until it's like, until I'm going to notice a big upgrade. Uh, good example, iPhone 8 Plus is what I was using for a long time. Great phone. I loved it. And I, you know, it was way better than the iPhone 6 I had. I didn't even have a 6S. I had a 6. Um, the, 8, the 8 Plus was amazing. And then I got the 12 Pro Max. And I was like, man, this is like some next level stuff. So I've been rambling about it in the last couple of videos and my videos are coming out a little bit out of order. I apologize. So whenever you see this, there will be a review coming on a Kia K5 that I drove this last weekend. And yeah, that car kind of hurt my feelings. Like it, it kind of shook up my world a little bit. Uh, I've been loving the 2018 Kia Optima plug-in, you know, for a couple of years. I know I talk about it a lot. I love this car. It's awesome. I remember when I test drove it, I was like, wow, this is some really next level stuff. Like cars have really come, you know, there, there's a huge jump in the technology. And uh, and I feel like we're, we're kind of at that point again, folks, which is a little, it, it's, it's like exciting on the one hand, and then it's also kind of disappointing because it makes everything that came before it kind of outdated and a bummer I kind of felt that way when I first started to notice like built-in nav systems in cars I just kind of thought well those nav systems are gonna be outdated like almost before they're even released so what's you know what is that nav system gonna look like in five years in ten years in 15 years and I was right about that I mean if you check out a good example of the nav system on my 06 Corvette stinks. It's useless. Like, useless. Half the time, the map DVD won't even read. I mean, it just sucks. Um, you know, and that technology just looks looks prehistoric now when you get into the car. Um, and so, like, with this car, it, you know, it has Apple CarPlay and all this stuff. And I felt like it looked pretty modern. But then I drove this 2021 K5, and like the screen was bigger, it was brighter, it was clearer, it was crisper, it was faster, the maps were better, the, the backup camera was way better. Um, so like the, the tech was like way better, the car steers itself, my car won't do that. I mean, not that it's like a must have feature, but um, and I kind of liked it. Like today, that would be nice. I, I would kind of enjoy some auto steer, whatever you call it. Um, and then the other thing that was kind of a bummer was just like how fast and responsive that car was. Like it was, it was quick, man. I, I really like driving it. And then I get back into this car and I mean, of course it's great to be home and I, I love my car and it's, you know, not complaining, but part of me kind of wishes I had that K5. You know, it's like once you experience the future, it's hard to look back. And I think we're at a point with cars and maybe we've been here for a while. I'm just behind the times, but we're kind of at that point where like, you're going to be disappointed when you drive the new stuff. Like you're going to be disappointed with what was new only a few years ago. Does that make sense? So like this 2018 car feels really dated after driving a 2021 car. And I'm really surprised about that. Um, I think when we drive the 2025 cars, the, the 2021 cars are going to feel ancient. Um, you know, the technology is just really advancing quickly. And um, 
And I think Hyundai and Kia, which same company, by the way, I think they're doing really, really great work. Um, the dealer network, not so much, but the uh, company themselves, uh, very impressed with, with what they offer in their product. I think, I think they're really some of the best new cars out there. Um, not just for the features, but also for like the driving experience and the comfort and just the overall layout of the car. So, as you can see, I've prepared on a dealer tag because, you know, folks, we got to reuse our stuff. You, know, I, you could just throw this away or you could make a top 10 list. Why not? Um, so it got me thinking, like, if you always had to have, like, the next best thing or the newest thing, rather. Some people don't care about having the best car, but they want the newest car. Um, and I think if you're the kind of person that leases cars or if you're the kind of person that wants to buy a new car but doesn't want to spend a ton of money, then, like, this is for you. Um, these would be good, like, A to B cars. I'm sure you could option the... Uh, the option them out to be bigger, or, or I mean, not bigger, but like fancier and better. But I think we're talking pretty much base model stuff here. Uh, so according to Kelly Blue Book, <coughs> this is the top 10 cars, brand new, for under $25,000, which is very appealing. So uh, I'm, I'm going with their order. This is not my order. I would do a different order, but here we go. And I'll tell you like my general experiences with, with these cars. And I'll tell you if I don't have any experience. So this is kind of my opinions. So number 10 on the list is the Chevy Trailblazer. I am shocked to see a Chevy on the list, to be honest. Uh, just with all the hot garbage they've made over the last forever. And I'm a longtime Chevy fan. So I hate saying that, but it's true, folks. Come on. Like... A lot of their stuff is garbage. You know it, and I know it. I'd love to have a Silverado. I would, for sure. I'd love to have a Corvette. Uh, I mean, I have a Corvette. I'd love to have a new one. I'd love to have a C7. But there are things about those cars that aren't good. Don't deny it, okay? I'm standing firm on that. And I own a Chevy, so I can say that. That's that's what I can do. Uh, so that's number 10. Uh... I, I've never driven a Trailblazer. It might be awesome. And I'm sure anything brand new is going to be fine. It's just like once you run out of that 36,000 mile warranty. Ooh, tick tock. <laughs> Brace yourselves. Uh, so personally, would not be my choice. But I haven't driven one, so I could be wrong. I'll change. I feel free to reserve the right to change my mind. Um, number nine the Corolla hatchback. Now I saw one of these sitting on the Toyota lot. I thought it looked kind of funny to be honest. It looks a lot like the uh, Lexus CT200. And I think what I said was I'd rather have the Lexus, but you're not going to get the Lexus for 25 G's. So I think the Corolla is probably a strong play. You know, it, it's a Toyota, it's a hatchback, it's a Corolla. I mean, dude, if it fits your lifestyle, that's a that's a win. I don't know why it's number nine. Uh, I would put that way higher on the list if it were me. Um, so, anyway, I think that's a solid choice. Uh, number eight, the Nissan Rogue Sport. Odd pick. Surprised to see a Nissan on this list, to be honest with you. They've made some seriously steaming piles of hot garbage. Uh, over the last 10, 15 years. Like, stinky, awful, awful cars. Some of them have been good. Uh, so I don't mean to say that everything they've made stinks, but a lot of it does. And you know it's true. Don't, don't lie to yourself. Um, the Rogue is a car that I've driven, although I haven't driven one since 2014. So I'm sure it's changed a lot. I will tell you the one I drove back then, legroom was good, seat was pretty comfortable, engine was peppy, uh, it had one of those, like, um, one of those uh, CVT transmission automatics, and it did that, like, synthetic gear change thing, uh, which was surprisingly effective. Like, it didn't, 
it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. But I was kind of thinking like, this is a CVT, just be a CVT. And, and I'm one of those rare car guys that kind of likes a, a CVT transmission. And I know that's really, really awful to say, but I, I kind of like it. It kind of reminds me of like a diesel truck, you know, where it just kind of hangs in gear and just delivers power for a long time. So I, I don't know. I, I kind of dig the CVT. Um, sorry if I seem distracted. There's like a cool, it's like a military plane flying up there. It's really neat looking. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but I'm out in uh, aviation country here up in uh, Palmdale. And uh, yeah, there's a there's a bunch of that going on here. It's really cool. So uh, so anyway, Nissan Rogue. Um, I, I'm not sure how much I would trust the transmission for longevity. But, you know, it's a pretty attractive package overall. Like what it can do what it can hold, the amount of comfort you get. So, you know, that could be a really nice car. Wouldn't be my choice, but it's on the list. So there you have it. Mazda CX-30. That's the next one. Or 1098, number seven, yeah. Uh, number seven, Mazda CX-30. I have not driven one of these, um, but everybody I talk to that owns a Mazda, they always kind of like, it's always kind of the same thing. They're always like, I love my Mazda. My Mazda is the best car best car because great engine sky blue I, you know and again I'm sure I'm sure there's some truth to that um, so so I understand why it's on the list in 6.2 I uh, this guy again uh, so I, I'm not surprised to see it on the list and they've been making good cars for a long time uh, even their partnership with Ford like wasn't that bad uh, wouldn't be my first choice but I understand they're really great. Uh, I've ridden in a few Mazdas and I've driven a few and they're, you know, they're nice cars. Again, not my taste, but you know, obviously a lot of people like them and I can see why. So I'm sure that's a good vehicle and for under 25 grand, you know, seems like a home run to me. Uh, next one, number six, the Subaru Crosstrek. Uh, I have not been in one of these. I've been in a Forester and I wanna say I've been in an Outback and, you know, Subarus are another one, I think even more of a cult following than Mazda. Like, Subaru people are everywhere. And uh, I'm just seeing more and more Subarus. They're, they seem to always hold their value. Uh, and they seem to last a long time. So I'm going to give that a thumbs up. The thing that I don't like personally about Subarus when I've been in them, um, I find that the interior accoutrements are not to my liking. I, I don't like the switch gear. I don't like the radio. Uh, I just don't like their design language. But but if that doesn't bother you, then good car. Go for it. And certainly some off-road capability. Of, obviously, Subaru has a legendary history for that. So uh, can't go wrong there. Next the Honda HRV. Now, this is a, a peculiar little vehicle that I have not actually been in, but I've known several people who own them. They really like them. Uh, good kind of uh, utility purpose. You know, it's one of those kind of crossover thingies. Not going to do anything for you off-road, but certainly a good, you know, urban commuter. Uh, and I'm sure it's fine on the highway. Gas mileage is probably pretty good. So, and it's a Honda man, so you're not going to lose money. That's, you know, that's a home run. If you can get one for 25, go for it if you like the car. Next, the Hyundai Kona. And this is one that's kind of been on my list. And not surprised to see it here. Um, again, lots, lots of features for the money. Lots of utility for the money. Like... It's a nice little car. I haven't driven one yet. I'd really like to, but uh, really, really digging that. Uh, next on the list, similar car, the Kia Soul. Definitely not one of my favorite cars that Kia makes. Um, I've driven several iterations of the Soul over the years. Uh, never liked it that much, to be honest with you. Uh, don't really like the way it drives. I 
don't like the way it feels, don't like the way it looks. <laughs> so, not a huge fan. But at the same time, I see a lot of them out there. You can put a bunch of stuff in the back. The gas mileage isn't terrible. And obviously in the new ones, like the standard features are gonna be pretty, pretty good bang for the buck. So I can see that as being a, a thumbs up if you like the Soul. I just don't. Uh, next on the list would be the Kia Seltos. And I saw one of these recently and went, huh, I didn't know the Seltos was a thing. Um, but the Seltos is a thing. <laughs> so that's definitely a vehicle I'd like to drive and I would like to check out further. Um, if it's anything like the other Kia lineup, it's probably pretty good. Like, I don't think they're really making a bad car right now. They're just making some that I like more than others. So really curious about the Seltos, S-E-L-T-O-S. -E I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, but uh, I think that's right. And then number one on the list, uh, you know, an old favorite, the uh, Honda Civic hatch, the hatchback. That is not a surprise at all. Obviously, Honda's been crushing it for decades and uh, everyone loves a Civic hatch. So I don't, I don't blame them for putting that number one on the list. And, you know, to be able to own a legend, and I, you know, I can't believe I'm calling a Civic a legend, but I think at this point, like, the the history of that car and the legacy that it leaves behind is, is undeniable, you know, and I think every generation of Civic has, you know, had some sort of a cultural impact. Whether it was a car you noticed or not, it's a car we've all lived with. Like, I've never owned one, but you're always going to be next to one at a stoplight. You're going to be parking behind one on the street. They're everywhere. You know, it's a cockroach. <laughs> They're just, they will be here long after we're gone. So, uh, you know, respect where, where it's due. Um, I'm, I'm all about the Civic, even though I've never had one. Um, but I can certainly, I can certainly say without the shadow of a doubt that, uh, it deserves to be on the list. Uh, I recently sat in a new Civic and I thought it was a really nice car. The standard features were really impressive, you know, and just like the base model. I'm sure the power is pretty decent and the gas mileage is good too. Um, I think the only thing for me is that like the seat was a little narrow, so it didn't feel so good to hear. Uh, it's kind of like sitting in economy class on Southwest, you know, plenty of leg room, but <laughs> if you're a bigger fellow, uh, or gal, you might not be super comfortable in that seat. But if you're of the right size, then hey, perfect car for you. Uh, what I've been really impressed with the Kia lineup, for example, is that their seats are are made with a more generous proportion in mind, and uh, and I appreciate that. Especially, uh, I mean, it just shows that they're paying attention to their market, and I think that that's I think that that's really important. I mean, and let's face it, here in America. Uh, a lot of us are, let's just say, uh, of more prosperous proportions. So I, I think it's good when these car companies consider that and make the seat a little, a little bigger, just so you, you have that room for your shoulder blades and everything else. So, and, and that's what I love about my, uh, about my Optima, you know, it's, it's really comfortable for me and, you know, plenty of room here. So. In any case, hats off to the Honda Civic hatchback. I'm sure that's a great car, and uh, no doubt that it deserves to be number one. Um, I'm surprised it's not like the Civic and the Corolla kind of tied for first. I, I didn't know why the uh, Corolla was so, so far down the list. Well, hey folks, sorry about that. Got interrupted, and suddenly it's nighttime. Through the magic of YouTube, it's nighttime. Uh, so as I was saying, I was just kind of surprised that the Toyota Corolla ended up kind of as low on the list as it did. Um, but I'm sure there's a good reason for that. I mean, the bottom line is, folks, you could buy a new car for under 25000 I mean, probably not, but maybe. And that's what KBB recommends for their top 10. And, uh, you know, just curious if any of you have any of those cars um, you know put them down in the comments let me know how do you like them like what do you like what do you hate 
because um, you know, and, and I'm of the the mindset like I'm I'm sorry about my lane thing. Uh, you know, I'm really car crazy. Some of you may have seen uh, Mr. McGuire's show back in the day on like Speed Network, Car Crazy, and he was just talking about how car crazy he is, and he just loves cars, and I'm that way too. I mean, I think the car that I said the most bad things about was probably the Trailblazer or the Nissan Rogue. But you know what, folks? I bet you if you handed me the keys to a brand new one of those, even like base model, and said, here, here's your new car, I bet you I would enjoy it very much. I'm sure I would I would get lots of uh, pleasant miles out of both of those cars. Uh, and I'm also a believer in, you know, if you take care of your stuff, then hopefully your stuff will take care of you um, in, in any sort of uh former fashion. I mean, I've bought a lot of things, you know, that were made in China that maybe, like, maybe would have broken pretty quickly, but because I was gentle with them, like, they, they lasted a long time. Um, and I've also seen people be rough with stuff that was made really well and broke right away. So, you know, I do think a lot of it is, you know, maintenance and and just the, the general care. I mean, if you take you know, if you take a Lexus LS400 and drive it without changing the oil for 20,000 miles, you're going to mess it up. Like, even though it's one of the best cars ever made. Um, you can take a brand new Honda Civic hatchback and drive it for 20,000 miles and not change the oil, and you would mess it up. So I think, I think the key is, like, any car could potentially be pretty darn good if you take good care of it. Um, obviously, there are some brands that are known for doing that you know, or for making a more reliable vehicle than others. You know, certainly Honda and Toyota are at the top of that list. Um, and probably Subaru not too far behind, frankly. So, uh, but again, take care of your stuff. Hopefully your stuff will take care of you. You're going to get unlucky. You're going to buy the one Toyota that breaks. You're going to buy the one Chevy that lasts forever. So, you know, I, I think uh, any of these could be really good choices. I'm just kind of telling you my opinion and what I would do. But I'm really curious to hear what you would do. Um, just like we did with uh, Hoovy's car list um, of his cars for sale, you know, like I got some really, <clears throat> really fantastic responses on that. And, uh, you know, made me think about that list in a different way. So, I again, I would just love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, and you know, and I'll probably do do a few videos like this. Um, I would love to drive every car on this list. If you have one of these cars and you'd let me take a spin, uh, let me know. That would be fun. Um, particularly the Kia Seltos. Like, <laughs> kind of kind of jazzed about Kia right now, uh, having driven the Sportage and the K5. And uh, you know, I'm really curious. I'd like to drive their whole lineup. And uh, sure I can work that out somehow. So anyway, folks, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for participating in our little games. Uh, what would you buy? And uh, I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.